everybody, this is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Today I want to talk to you about solar panels in winter. So the question I hear all the time, and I'm going to walk as I talk because the wind can be uh, extreme right now. The question I'm asked very often is, and that I see on the internet, can you use solar panels in the winter in northern climates? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. Um, there are some things which will affect your solar power efficiency. The type of solar panels that you have absolutely affect the power output and the type of weather that you can use them in. Back there behind me, is some old Harbor Freight amorphous type solar panels which I am going to be pulling into uh, use here really soon on my off-grid system. Now I want to talk to you at this type, this point about the three different types of solar panels. There are the ones like I have here, they're polycrystalline and they're easily identified by the mixed crystal structure in the panels. Let me pull this up and show you. You can see the beautiful blue crystals in the solar panels and that's polycrystalline. So it's just a mess of jumbled up crystals, the structure in the solar panel. Now monocrystalline would have, you wouldn't see the different um, cells, the, uh, the different crystals in there and it's more of a darker colored panel. And the polycrystalline panels are cheaper, which you'll find in solar panels, solar cells like these. You can see the crystals. They're beautiful, actually, in the sun. Amorphous is quite dark and uniform in appearance. The important difference is Polycrystalline is really cheap, okay? That's why you find them in your, your common little solar cells like this, your solar panels. And therefore, it is the most abundant, I think. But it is also the least efficient of all your solar panels. It is not the most efficient in all types of weather. I happen to have polycrystalline because they are cheap. And I am going off the grid on a dirt cheap budget. Now, the monocrystalline panels cost a bit more, but they're more efficient. And also, the monocrystalline being more efficient can handle a little bit of cloudiness. And that is incredibly important for bad weather days and winter, as we're in now. The amorphous panels, like these little ones down here, I find to be incredibly good on cloudy days. Those amorphous panels, like from Harbor Freight, if they've changed them in the meantime, I don't know. But the original Harbor Freight panels that I had back in the day are absolutely awesomely um, good on cloudy days. Rainy rain, forget it. I mean, when it's dark out, no, forget it. But on cloudy days, they're really really good and then the next best being the monocrystalline panels and then the next being the polycrystalline so my advice is buy the best that you can afford look at the efficiency rating on the panels when you're setting up your off-grid solar powered system one thing I should note on the amorphous panels is their shorter lifespan they're a thinner coating and from my experience and what I've seen, they don't last as long. They're not as good. There's also thin film, but it's not as common. We're not going to get into that. That's used mostly in uh, mobile and flexible applications. Now, the because these are cheaper, you can afford to get more. More is always better. Even with the lowered efficiency, you can afford to get more for the money. You'll notice in your solar LED lamps, your garden lamps and dollar store lamps, 
they're all the they're the dark colored so these are either amorphous or monocrystalline but these are tiny they're usually the they're more um, they got better output along a long range a wide range of light conditions but if you were to buy the cells individually rather than the lights they're gonna cost you more these probably will cost as much as I paid for those larger cells down there so um, if you buy them individually that's why I usually buy a mess of these for my projects if I want some small cells now here's a really neat effect as solar panels get hotter in the Sun they become less efficient so being that in winter we have colder temperatures but less sunlight you have a little bit of a gain in efficiency as compared to summer in the bright sunlight so that's a, uh, a cool little fact right there the efficiency in winter is increased due to the colder temperatures and see so there's there's a little offset from your lack of sunlight now granted in summer you have longer days and more sunlight hours less storms less less uh, cloudy days in winter you have a lot more cloudy periods so in winter you're not going to have as much power production as you would in summer that is an absolute fact you cannot get around that therefore you're going to want to do two things to be able to get through the winter months. You're going to want to overbuild your system. More panels, more batteries to get you through a period of cloudy days. On average, it's recommended to have a battery storage capacity that will get you through three days with no sunlight. Because in winter you can often have three days, even in summer, two or three days of rain and storms therefore you should oversize your your system now to many people that might seem wasteful but you can also have what's called a dump load when your battery banks are full on a day like today and even in winter my batteries are going to be filled up very rapidly because I have enough panels to charge my batteries up fast enough in any condition day like today they'll fill up early and then you can have what's called a dump load and you can actually have a solar powered hot water heating system so your excess power after your batteries are topped off can be dumped into heating water I did a video a few years back about a guy that had over 20,000 watts of solar power uh, panels and he had I asked him are you do you want a grid tie are you ever gonna grid tie nope nope he dumps it into his water heating system and it's more of a battery a storage another version of power energy storage so that is a uh, an option when you oversize your system bigger is always better always go more than you will ever need and then you won't run out in a cloudy period in a situation like we have with extreme winter and extreme summer conditions my panels are adjustable and it's just on the edge right now at peak sunlight I've got to tip them a little bit right now but as we get nearer and nearer to shorter days I've got to start tipping them more vertical because the Sun is going to start going lower in the sky at its peak position and that will having adjustable solar panels is going to allow you to get more energy from the Sun as the seasons progress and get right into that sun the the more direct you can have that sun in your panels the more energy you produce at any given time during the day now you want to do that during peak midday so I have to wait a while when that Sun is up peak in the sky at its highest point before I decide when I'm gonna tip these panels I think I'm gonna go down one notch right now because uh, I'll, I'll get a little bit more power that way if you cannot adjust your panels then the other thing again is to get more more is always better I'll repeat that a lot so the bottom line and the point of it all is can you go off the grid and use solar panels in the winter and the answer is absolutely yes 
depends on your budget, the more money you invest into the system, the better and more comfortable you'll live off the grid in winter. I have more solar panels over there, I've got more solar panels over there, and I've got little panels everywhere. So this isn't everything. We've got panels all over the place. And again, more is better. If you can afford it, get the monocrystallines. It is absolutely going to pay you back in energy savings and capacity in the long run. A very big thing about living off the grid in winter is it's a lifestyle. You have to learn to adjust your energy consumption patterns to adapt to the weather. Like today is an awesome laundry day. It's just above freezing. There's a wind. I keep pausing the camera because there's a heavy wind keeps coming through here. And for off-grid families, <laughs> sunny days are laundry days. You got more power, you got extra power to burn, and you've got free energy from the sun and wind to dry your clothes. Now there are many, many, many families living off the grid in northern climates and doing just fine all year round which just the power of their solar panels. So in closing, I will say, again, can you use solar panels in winter? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. I've been off the grid uh, almost fully from 2013 to 2009. When did we move to Michigan? A few years ago, four years ago. I was fully off the grid, 100% with these panels and had everything I needed. Now that we have larger homes and a bigger property, we use more energy, but we have adapted and become more comfortable with more electric powered devices and equipment. In time, I'm gonna expand our panels and have more power, more battery capacity, and a more comfortable, more relaxed lifestyle using more energy. Instead of waiting for a sunny day to, to wash your clothes, with more panels, you can just do it whenever you want. And that's the key to it all right there. The budget is everything. So I hope this answers some of your questions in the coming months. I do have some more videos I will share how to wire up your solar panels, how to connect a solar charge controller, how to wire up your batteries, and how to connect and use an inverter. So watch for those videos in the coming months throughout the winter. I have more time for this type of video. And I hope you do like this video give me a thumbs up if you do leave a comment below uh, i'd love to hear from you and your thoughts or questions i'll be happy to answer your questions also if you have some questions come on over to the do-it-yourself world forum and it's the do-it-yourself world.com and then click on forum and uh, i'd be happy to to help you there personally as well um, subscribe if you haven't you never know what's happening tomorrow at the off-grid homestead talk to you later